So my name's Sarah and I'm going to just briefly talk and just, just start with a bit of a walkthrough really of limb x-ray interpretation and why I've started the day like this. We've got a very mixed audience um, here today um, across, across um, the UK in fact. So we've got a mix of uh, urgent care practitioners, we've got a mixture of um, uh, doctors, nurses, um, ENPs, ANPs, and I think actually one of the most challenging things is sort of thinking about the language um, that you often need to know to or be aware of some of the language and some of the principles behind it. So this little talk shouldn't, shouldn't take too long. Um, we'll just give you some of that language to get you thinking in, in the mode of sort of x-ray interpretation. So, as I said, what I'm going to try and do is give you a couple of different structures and we're going to talk um, and you're going to get the opportunity to practice sort of interpreting limb x-rays. This isn't meant to be, you know, the radiology sort of level, but it's just to get you thinking. So when you're referring to our orthopaedic colleagues or to other colleagues um, that we're all speaking the same language. So let's test this out. Let's see how the audience are. Um, so if you can go to menti.com or if you want to use the chat, that's absolutely fine. Um, and essentially, you know, what sort of words or phrases or, you know, terminology are you going to use when you want to describe a fracture or an injury on an x-ray? And we're talking really about an x-ray here. Here we are. So we've got some words coming up as people. So yeah, distal angulated. And this is going to form a word cloud. So as the repeated words come up, the words will get bigger. Uh, let's just see what the audience are feeling. That's great. So some of the words, you know, so displaced, radial. Uh, we've got green stick. Yeah, absolutely. Buckle, yeah. Yeah, translated. So yeah, so get, getting some of the flavor of the words there, I think that's that's great. So some of that common language that we that we use um, with our colleagues. So limb x-ray interpretation. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, some different ideas about some of the things that um, you can think about um, when talking about limb x-ray interpretation. And being an emergency medicine doctor and, you know, talking to a, you know, an audience of emergency medicine, uh, healthcare professionals and, and um, urgent care professionals, you know, I like my ABCs. Um, so let, let's have a little think about that. So A, all we start with, is it accurate? Is it the right patient? Is it the right image? Is it the correct view? Is the image adequate? And the reason why I say that um, is I have myself referred accidentally the wrong patient with the wrong, not the wrong patient, but the wrong, the right patient with the wrong x-ray. And when I was doing orthopedics, I got referred a fractured neck of femur, um, which the patient did have a fractured neck of femur, but actually it was their fractured neck of femur from three months ago, which we've already fixed. So really important that we're getting the, the right, the right patients at the right time um, and the right image. Um, and those, those that are keen in the audience, this is an example of dextrocardia, so where the heart is on the wrong side, and it's important that you double check that, you know, right patient, that the image is the right way around, because this is accurate for this particular patient. Um, bones, so B, review each bone. Are there any irregularities or fractures? You know, go around the edges of the bones, you know, see what's there, um, you know, think about, um, you know, if, if you've got bilateral x-rays or, you know, what, what's the shape of all the bones look like? And just, you know, think about, you know, does something look wrong? It might be that you don't know um, what it is or what is wrong, but, you know, think about, you know, if something doesn't quite look right and, you know, ask a friend. C, so thinking about the cortex and, you know, we're talking about paediatric um, minor injuries here today, but, you know, the principles still apply um, elsewhere. But, you know, is there a cortical or articular surface involvement? So looking here at this x-ray, it's got a nice buckle uh, fracture here. And you can see that, you know, that, that classic bump on a bone. Um, so just thinking about that. And obviously, if we were talking in the context of adults, you know, that has implications. But in the context of children, um, you know, just thinking about that, that cortex, is it, is it intact? Um, it's really important because it might change how you manage these patients. Dislocations. Um, 
lots of the audience and um, like myself you know uh, dislocations always thinking about them you know thinking about shoulders thinking about all the joints that you can dislocate you know it, are there any dislocations are there any subluxations is there any angulation or is there anything around you know just does the shape of the bone look wrong is it bent is, instead of being straight so thinking about you know is it in the right place does it look the right way um, and if it's if you're thinking it's dislocated have you actually got the right views of the x-ray that you've taken so thinking about, you know, have they done a Y view on a shoulder X-ray just so that you can see if it's dislocated, for example. And finally, e, everything else. And here obviously is a, is a little hand um, and you can just see that there's a wire uh, running through it. So thinking about, um, you know, soft tissues, is there foreign bodies, you know, is there fingers missing? Is there something else that's going on that we're missing? So just thinking about your ABCDs, E's, um, familiar sort of principle that you can apply to other x-rays. So is it accurate? What do the bones look like? What about the cortex? Are there any dislocations? And what about everything else? Now, um, a different approach um, is, you know, if you want to be really, you know, sort of thinking, um, you know, with, with the terminology is, is thinking about uh, sort of this mnemonic of the plaster of Paris. And we'll, we'll just walk through that. I wouldn't ordinarily expect everyone to remember this. It's not easy to remember, but again, it's just thinking about some of that common terminology that some of you have already shared and, and why that becomes important. So plaster of Paris um, is a slightly longer mnemonic, um, but sort of uses some of that terminology that our orthopedic colleagues will often like and, and will be interested to. And I've been very lucky in my career to work in lots of places, big places, small places, where orthopedics are on site, where orthopedics are on a different site. Um, so it's really important, you know, that if we're if, if you're referring um, that, you know, we're, we're talking that, that common language. So let's let's walk through. So patient information and the plane. So, you know, again, going back to that accurate bit of the ABC approach. Um, you know, right patient, is it the right, you know, x-ray at the right time in the right way that you want it? Location and level, you know, so thinking about, you know, did you want the wrist or did you want mean the scaphoid or did you mean the whole arm, the forearm? What, what are we talking about? And again, thinking about that articular surface involvement, um, you know, and that cortical involvement, you know, is, is the joint involved, you know, thinking about sort of Salter Harris type fractures, you know, what, what's going on with that articular surface? Is it simple or is it comminuted? So simple, is it just one break, one clean break, or is it comminuted? And apologies, my cat is just uh, doing, making an appearance, so I'm just going to pop her down. Um, you know, what type of fracture is it? Now, lots of us in our careers might have heard of different types of classifications of different types of fractures, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but... Um, you know, thinking about, you know, if you know the type, you know, so ankle fractures, particularly, so Weber's classification, you've got nears for shoulders, and you've got lots of different ones. It doesn't matter if you don't know them. Um, but, you know, just thinking about, you know, you know, and Salter Harris, of course, you know, what, if you do know them, if you're able to share that, that might help with the management. And sort of the extent and the reason. So, you know, is there anything else going on? Actually, they might have fallen off the monkey bars and they might have, you know, a great banana arm, a great bendy arm. But actually, have they banged their head? Is there something going else going on? And the reason, you know, we're talking about paediatrics here. You've always got to be thinking, is this a non-accidental injury? And um, some of the speakers may come on to talk about non-accidental injury. Um, but in this sort of context, you know, always thinking, does the injury make sense for the child that I'm seeing? Um, and locally, everyone will have that sort of their local policies about how to approach that. Is the fracture open or closed? So if it's an open fracture and it's particularly bad, um, you know, thinking about do we need to give antibiotics? Um, you know, does it actually need to go to a major trauma centre as opposed to be managed in a major trauma unit or in the urgent care centre? Are there any foreign bodies? If there's any foreign bodies, uh, and you know this goes with the open, you know the openness. If there's a fracture as well, you know thinking about tetanus, thinking about other, you know, manky wounds that you might be dealing with. Um, so thinking about actually what else, what else do we need to do apart from antibiotics and thinking about tetanus if that's needed. 
So the image here on the uh, on the right, as you look at the screen, shows um, sort of some of the principles about angulation and displacement. So we'll talk about angulation on the next slide. But displacement essentially is if you draw a straight line up the bone and the um, fracture is just um, sort of moved, moved over and displaced to either the left or the right or, you know, dorsally or volally or palmar or all of that. And that's that's um, uh, what that means. Angulation now. You know, in, in the in lot in some places I've worked, you know, actually I've been the person, particularly in sort of, you know, with adults and some children, you know, me as the emergency medicine doctor and my colleagues will will be the ones that are reducing some of the fractures. In other places that I've worked, it will be the orthopedic team. And often these fractures, you need to be thinking about angulation. And this little diagram sort of shows um, you know, the principles of how, how you calculate angulation. Um, you know. Inherently, the greater the degree of angulation, you know, it's more likely need it, going to need something doing with it, be it you're reducing it within the department or they're going to theatre and having something else, you know, a reduction, a closed reduction, plus or minus some metal work. I don't want to dwell and, you know, stress about how you calculate angulation. The diagram here shows it, but it is something to be thinking about, particularly if you're in centres where actually, you know, you haven't got easy access to your, our orthopaedic colleagues or fracture clinic maybe a month, a week down the line or something like that. It's worth understanding for different types of fractures when angulation might matter. Rotation. So rotation, I think, is, is, is obvious. You know, how rotated is the fracture? Um, you know, has it got, is it a spiral? Is it, you know, twisted in a funny way? You know, sort of thinking how, how much rotation there is. Impaction. Um, obviously, uh, thinking about, you know, how much shortening and impaction there is, so how much has the bone squashed on itself? And this becomes particularly important, you know, when you think about Salter Harris fractures in children, uh, which some of my colleagues will, will come on to talk about, because it will change, potentially change their management and have impact in the future if we, if we miss it. So I know I've walked you through a lot of words um, and, you know, a, a different mnemonic, plaster of Paris, that our favourite uh, favorite, uh, thing to, to put these fractures into. Um, I don't want you to get hung up about, you know, remembering the mnemonic, but I want you to use it as an idea for how uh, some of the words and the terminology that might just help your referrals to onward colleagues, wherever that may be. So, um, we've got a couple of cases that um, using Menti, I'm going to give you the opportunity to practice uh, describing the x-rays. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not asking for a sort of radiology consultant level, um, in, you know, sort of words and terminology, but it'd be really great, um, be it in the chat or in Menti when I bring it up now, if you can describe what you see. So how would you describe this x-ray? So um, I'll leave the image on the screen for a minute. If you're on a device, you'll be able to see the image. And um, then we'll talk about some of the words that we, we might use. If you want to put it into the chat, that's absolutely fine. Um, you know, just, um, you know, whatever works for you. And it's just to get you thinking, if you don't want to do the chat or mentee, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry. Take a bit of paper, have a think about, you know, how would you describe this x-ray that's in front of us here? I'll just give you a couple of moments. So thinking about, you know, um, even, you know, with our ABC uh, approach or, you know, some of the terms that we were using with the plaster of Paris, you know, thinking about that angulation, thinking about displacement, thinking about, you know, you know, obviously I haven't given you the patient's name and details and age and all of that, which are really important, but just, just, just have a go. Um, you know, what would you write in the notes other than distal radius fracture, perhaps? So some of the some of the uh, um, words and phrases that people have used, and I've got some, uh, um, you know, in the chat and here we've got uh, distal radius fracture, we've got green stick, we've got distal transverse radius fracture, um, we've got um, dorsally angulated, uh, we've got some displacements and things like that, and they they are all the right words to be using. Um, I'm going to break the golden rule of uh, presentations and put a lot of text, but something along the lines of, and please, you know, we, we wouldn't need to necessarily put it to this sort of level, but just thinking about the principles of sort of plaster of Paris uh, and using some of those words. So we've got an AP and a lateral x-ray of, 
a right wrist, showing a simple fracture in the distal third of the right radius. There are no other fractures evident. It's a closed fracture with no obvious foreign bodies. There is a little dorsal displacement. There's probably 20 to 30 degrees of angulation. There's no rotation, impaction or shortening, and the growth plates are present because obviously we're talking now. I'm not a radiologist and, you know, I would never write to that level of detail in the notes, but it's worth thinking about and just, you know, when you're referring to a colleague that can't see the x-ray, you know, over the phone, what some of that language is again. So I'm going to have another case now. Um, and let me just show the image. So this is an this is an x-ray. This is a classic banana arm, probably fallen off uh, um, a monkey bars. Have a look at this and think about some of the language. You can make the name up for the patient. That's absolutely fine. I don't really mind. Um, but just, you know, what what um, what do you think about this x-ray? Let's have a look and see what some people are showing. So we've got a displaced mid shaft fracture of the radius, we've got multi-level fractures, we've got a uh, mention of the proximal third of the radius. Um, and I think it's really important uh, whenever you're describing any x-ray, I think it's really important when we document it in the notes, particularly thinking about, um, you know, is it the proximal, distal, is it the middle? Because again, that has implications for how you might manage these fractures and, and when you're sharing that. So again, I'm going to break the golden rule of presentations, but to give you an idea of some of the flavour and some of the words that I was sort of thinking about for this is there's an AP and lateral x-ray of whoever's x-ray uh, right forearm, shows a simple fracture of the mid shaft of both the ulna and the radius. Uh, there's no other fractures evidence um, and it's a closed fracture. Uh, there's some displacement, there's some angulation, 20 to 30 degrees with some shortening of the lateral x-ray. There's no obvious impaction or rotation and obviously the, the growth plates are present. And again, you know, that's very complicated and very long. But again, it's just to give you that flavour of some of the things that you need to be thinking about. Not necessarily, not necessarily always writing, um, but when you're talking about x-rays and writing them down in the notes. So uh, I'm going to come to the end of the talk here um, and, you know, just thinking about your ABCs, thinking about that approach. It might be a term that you, a principle that you've used sort of with chest x-ray interpretation or other x-ray interpretation. And thinking about some of the common words that we used with plaster or Paris, um, you know, the, those more technical terms that our orthopaedic colleagues are probably more familiar with.